Uh, somebody remember to hit the record button. I love it when that happens. <laughs> yeah, speaking of. <laughs> yeah, speaking of. That didn't happen yesterday. Yeah. I've now gone to putting that into my slides. And slide number two is turn the recording on. Oh, well, that's so smart. What a brilliant that's idea. idea. That's so and smart. Slide number three is slide number one again. So at least the title gets caught. Oh, <laughs> okay. wow. Okay. You okay. thought of everything. <laughs> um, mistake after mistake after mistake, you know. Yeah. Hi, Esmeralda. Good to see you this morning. Niall, uh, if you want, I will watch the chat so you don't have to worry about it. And, you know, kind of, I'll, I'll nudge in when, when questions feel like they fit. Okay. And it is just on 10 o'clock. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we got Niall Barnes. Niall, you're, you're, uh, at, uh, you're at SOM, aren't you? No, I'm at uh, FSOP, a school pharmacy. Oh, okay. My bad. Okay. So uh, Niall is here to talk to us about um, assignments which is a real kind of backbone important uh, skill within Canvas. And it has impact on a couple of other important areas like the grade book and the calendar. So uh, I am gonna turn it on over to Niall. Well, great. Um, thank you all for um, giving up an hour or so, um, hopefully less uh, to look at this. This is in many ways, very simple. Um, I think it's very uh, intuitive, but there are some quirks and um, we'll talk about those quirks. And then I want to thank Melissa. Melissa and I uh, talked last week about several things. And um, she came up with a nice list of uh, quirks and things to think about. And uh, I'll put a link to share that in the chat um, after we get going for a little bit, because uh, there's some really good uh, pearls in her uh, list that she gave me. Um, so with that, I'm going to share my screen and Am I sharing? Oops, I don't think I shared the right screen. <laughs> uh, yep, there we go. Uh, the right me, one. Yeah, okay. All right. It just every time I share the screen, it changes the, um, the uh, Zoom screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, when you log in, you know, you're going to find your published courses and such. And uh, for most of this, I'm gonna use my sandbox, which is, um, uh, Adela created this for me. So I just had a place to play with stuff and make up mistakes. Um, so I'm not uh, pushing them off on the students to begin with. So I'm just gonna open the, uh, the, uh, the module up, or excuse me, the sandbox up. And since we're talking about assignments, I'm gonna click on assignments to begin with. And when you go to assignments, normally all you see is this, top box here. This is assignments, no assignments in this group. And I've created a couple others already uh, to demonstrate something. But the first thing I want to do is basically add an assignment. So I can do plus assignment here. And when I do, we get um, a, a nice long screen with lots of choices. You'll have similar choices if you add a quiz. And I can demonstrate a quiz uh, later on as well. But uh, let's just say this is homework. Take off the caps. Homework number one. Okay. And I can put some description here for it. And um, if any of you are English professors, you've probably read this exact sentence before um, yeah. from some of our students. Um, and then we get down to the assignment details. And first one is how many points do you want this work? Um, let me emphasize putting in some points. Uh, let's say you haven't decided yet, put in a point, do something. Because if you fail to put in points, um, it will eventually count your stuff as extra credit. And if someone's getting points from this. So um, go ahead and put in some points. Sometimes I just put in a single point as a reminder to go in and do this. And the students will holler at you that, hey, it's only worth one point and you told me it was 10% of my grade. You can, uh, you can go in and fix that. But when it's a zero, all those points end up being extra credit for them. And then they don't tell you that. They like the extra credit. Um, you wanna put it in an assignment group. 
And I've already made two other groups, group work and essays. It defaults into assignments. Uh, and you can rename that to homework or dailies or whatever you want, or you can create a new group here if you'd like. And then you can list how you want the grades posted, percentage, points, complete, incomplete, letter grade, all those things are possible. If you do letter grade, there's another place you'll have to go in and assign what letter grades are which. But for the moment, I'm just going to leave it as points. Um, very often the students like percentages is one of the things that I have discovered, but um, I think that sometimes gives them sort of a false understanding. And then if this is really a practice uh, for them, you can actually click, don't count toward the final grade. So it's actually a practice for them. Um, and it, it grades it or allows you to grade it uh, as the case may be, but doesn't fall into their final grade. Um, and the next piece comes out to the submission. How do you want them to submit something to you? So let's say this is a homework and it's a worksheet or a math class, or uh, it's an essay. You can have them do a file upload. And there's also the button that says restrict upload types and you can put in .pdf or .doc or something like that. I will tell you personally, I've stopped restricting upload types because if the students get something slightly wrong in their suffix, it won't allow them. And so, um, you know, if I have some, if I say .pdf and it wants it, if they put in .pdf or space .pdf or something like that, it will block them from posting it. And then I get lots of emails. So to decrease my email number, I do I no longer restrict upload types. But they could also do media recordings, or they can put it on a website, or a text entry where they directly enter it. Um, and there's also a possibility of no submission or on paper. So if you want them to submit a formal paper where you're grading the paper, but you want them to see the assignment and the, the details of it on Canvas, well, this is how you do it. You, you click the on paper, and when you create the assignment, it also creates the gradebook entry for you. So by doing this, it, pop, it populates your gradebook and gives you a chance to do that. If you have them doing it on an external tool, it'll link them out to that external tool. Okay. Um, so there are several possibilities. Um, how many times do they get to play? You know, uh, limited or unlimited attempts, and then how many attempts? I usually um, set it for one, and uh, there is a way in um, the speed grader approach to this to go back and add uh, an additional attempt for an individual student without adding it for the whole class. So generally, it's one attempt, but um, I'll tell you a strategy I use for um, some of the student counselings in pharmacy is I make them record something, and I tell them you you've got a you've got a three you got a triad here of a, a pharmacist, a patient, and an evaluator, and here's your rubric, and I don't want to see you posting it until it's perfect. So I click the number of attempts is unlimited. And you know, if if they post it and I look at it and say it's wrong, hey guys, there's something missing, you get to do it again. And so they keep going and going and going and going. Um, I do know there is a plugin for this. Um, I saw this uh, last summer at um, the Canvas con convention in San Diego that's designed to put this outside of Canvas. So uh, for media recordings, it doesn't clog up uh, the bandwidth. But uh, there, there's some special things for that. Anyway, that's one of my little tricks. Um, and Niall, before we leave this area, let me make sure I'm, I'm tracking here because the different kind of file submissions are new for me. Uh, you know, there's a lot more possibilities than in Blackboard, and I want to make sure I'm following. So let's say, you know, I'm an, I'm an old English teacher, so let's say I want them to workshop um, 
a, a draft in class, you know, when we come back to doing things face to face. And I threw a few, throw a few points on it so they bring something. That'd be an example, for instance, of a paper submission, huh? It so could I, be. Yeah. Or, or you could also have them do it as a Word document that they have shared. And sure. then using the website URL, they can share that URL with within OneDrive or Google Docs or whichever okay. and submit it that way. That's pretty slick. And let's say then I wanted them for whatever reason to do something on Flipgrid. That would be an example of an uh, external tool. Exactly. Great, thanks. Sure. Okay, um, the next one is gr group assignments. And that really goes back to your, your question there, uh, Susan, as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A couple of things about group assignments. Canvas is different from Blackboard, and I appreciate uh, Melissa pointing this out to me. Um, in Canvas, if you do a group assignment, I'm sorry, in Blackboard, if you do a group assignment, it prompts the students to join a group. Canvas doesn't do that. So that is a, a difference. So if you say this is a group assignment and you haven't put students in groups, it allows for individual submissions. Okay. And then say, let's say Susan, Adela, and Tony are a group. They don't join the group and Tony submits it. Then Susan and Adela's grades aren't automatically uploaded when Tony submits it. Now, if you create the group in advance, Tony submits it for their group, then Adela's and Susan's grades are uploaded with it. So that's an important point about group submissions. Set up groups ahead of time, and you do that in people. And that's not one of the things on today's list of, that we're doing, but be aware of it. And beat up Melissa for reminding me of this, <laughs> um, about getting one for, for setting up groups. By the way, uh, if you have separate sections, um, those are treated as groups in Canvas as well. So you might have um, more than one group for a class. So you could have a you could have a group that's a, the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday because you have three different sections. And let's say it's a common class, but Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are three subsections of it. You could have all of them merged into one Canvas group, submit stuff as, for one class, but have each of the individual classes as a group. And within each class, you could set up subgroups. Okay. Um, so when you set up a group, um, you can set up that group name. Um, this, is a, this is the on the fly version of it. Uh, you could also do it in people. You could allow students to so self sign up. You can require groups to be in the same section or not. So let's say you have that class that's the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday have sections, and you don't care if the students submit, you know, across sections. You don't care if their group is somebody from Tuesday, somebody from Wednesday, they're all in your class. They just don't happen to meet in the classroom on the same day. You can do that. Or you can force them. And you can create groups randomly, or like I said, allow self sign up. Um, and then you can assign a group leader or set the first student or random students to be a, a group leader. So there's several good choices in that. And again, setting groups is not really part of what I'm talking about today. But since it's on the setup for uh, uh, an assignment, I thought I'd at least mention it. All right, uh, I'm gonna undo. Oh, and this assign grades to each student individually. Um, this allows, let's say you've got group work and um, you're afraid that students are not going to do equal work in it. Um, this lets you go in and manually assign their grades as if you uncheck it, then everybody gets the same grade. And there are some more subtleties to that as well. I'm gonna undo group assignment and move on to peer reviews. Um, this is another good one for the, uh, writing assignments. 
Uh, you can manually sign peer reviews. You can automatically assign them. Um, you can say how many reviews are there. And this basically will prompt the, the, um, the class to review each other's work. Um, you have a assignment reviews due date. Uh, and that due date clearly has to be after the assignments due. So there are several good choices there. And you can make them anonymous, or you can leave them um, um, identified. And then assign to is one of my favorite things. Um, and it's a pain. <laughs> but once you figure it out, it's great. Um, so generally, you're going to assign something to everybody in the class. But um, let's say um, I'll pick on Kathy this time. Kathy doesn't show up for class one day and there was an assignment due and she wants special dispensation for it. But I'm gonna change the assignment to, uh, because we covered the, we reviewed the assignment in class that day. I can make a new assignment just for Kathy and put it in here. So I can put in, I don't have anybody assigned to this class, so I can't put another name, but I can certainly make it an individual. Um, I can also uh, do it by section. Uh, I have a lab um, discussion section for a course. Um, and actually, Tony's in the course with me. And we can do this Tuesday's groups due on this date. I can add another one and assign it to somebody else that, that um, uh, Tuesday's group does it, has it do here, Wednesday's group has it do there, Thursday's group has it do someplace else, so that they're, each group is uh, appropriately assigned. Uh, you should make it available before it's due. If you don't put an available date in it, it's automatically available. If you don't put an end date on it, it stays available. So if you make your due date and your until date the same, you'll get no late papers because they won't be able to get to it after the until date. Does that make sense? Okay, that's, that's filling out this form. Um, before you leave, Niall, uh, let's go back to the peer review because again, that was new to me. Uh, and the business about uh, an anonymity. So let's say I check that. That means that the recipient of the peer review doesn't know who the reviewer is, but do I know? I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, I've only used that once and yeah. I, I bungled it. So I'm not sure <laughs> that's the answer, it's true. Tell, tell us how you bungled it so we don't bungle it the same way. We'll do we'll bungle in new and different ways. I I added this after setting the assignment free for the students to do. Mm -hmm. And so um, some of the students didn't get the peer review request uh, okay. when uh, the review date happened. And I'm not quite sure what I did wrong for that to happen that way. Okay. And the automatically assigned peer reviews, does that work pretty much like automatically putting people in Zoom breakout rooms? You just say how many groups are and, right. and the computer does its magic? Right. You just tell them how many reviews they need to, each student needs to get. So let's say if I say that each student needs to get two reviews, mm -hmm. then each user has to do two reviews on two different students. And the computer will assign them their their uh, students to review. Right. This is very slick. I, I like this a lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to go. Let's assume that. And at the end, of course, hit the save button. If you and I'm. Let's just. I'm going to take homework. I've got nothing in there really. I'm going to hit save. I didn't choose a submission type. It won't let me go forward. So I'm going to say file upload. I'm going to try again, and it, it's letting me this time. And then when I, you'll notice here that the publish icon is not highlighted. If it's unpublished, the student can't see it. 
there are a couple of different ways to build something and show students later. The simplest of them is simply don't publish it, okay? Um, you can publish it and put it in a module and have the module un invisible. And we can, I'll show you that a little bit of that in a second, uh, but this is the simplest. It's also the easiest thing to screw up. I have made quizzes and assignments and got everything the way I want it, put it in a module and never hit publish on it. And so the students are going, I can't do it. You told us this was coming, but I can't do it. So this is the, the biggest thing. Um, when you are in the edit mode, like we were just a second ago, and instead of save, you hit save and publish, that button is automatically clicked for you. And of course you can um, go back and unclick it. And has anybody talked about speed grader yet? This coming is again, attraction. Coming attraction. So you're gonna love speed grader, whoops, not today, but you're gonna love speed grader when you get there. It's an easy way to bounce through assignments. All right, so if I go back to my assignments link, you'll see that I have homework one that we just created in assignments. I don't like that name assignments. I'm gonna edit it and I'm gonna change it to homeworks. If I could spell. And the nice thing about this is, this is where you throw out. It's like, all right, these are quizzes or homeworks. I'm gonna throw out your lowest grade. I'll throw out your lowest. If you've got, um, you know, um, occasionally you want to throw out a highest you know you know somebody got lucky um especially in the days of um uh, covid where we're doing things at home and you're afraid that you know sometimes they're they're cheating when they're doing this and you just want to throw you know throw out their highest grade you can do that too you can also do a never drop so i can say never drop homework one let's say homework one is my gimme grade for them. It's like, um, I but I want all your demographics. I want to know everything about you. I want this essay about you. Don't drop homework one and it'll keep it from dropping homework one. And I can add multiple ones to that as well. So that's a nice little feature in the edit. I can also assign group weights. So let's say my assignments are worth a third, my group works worth a third, and my essays are a third, I can put those in and actually, if I put in 33, I don't think it lets me save. No, it does. So I'm still short of a point there, but it tells me here how much they're assigned worth as a group. So it'll average all my homeworks and they'll be worth a third of their grade. And when I go to the grade book, you'll see each homework is there. And then you'll see the averages by topic, by assignment type. And the students will get to see that information as well for themselves, but not for anybody else. All right. Um, let's see. And actually, let me go to a real course just to show you. Um, this is the course that I have starting next week, um, a seminar course. And so I have basically two assignments for the students. And I also want to see their CPR cards and I want them to give me a copy of their certificate when they finish this course. By making these two um, assignments that they have to do a file upload, I force them to do that. And right now I have no points associated with either of these two. I did that on purpose. They will be bonus points for the students. And that's how I, I will sell it to the students is, you know what, I need your certificate. I need proof that you've done this. Um, and they're really reluctant sometimes to, to do that. And it's like, okay, I give you a point. Oh my God, they'll jump on it like a you know, duck on a June bug for a point. 
um, and we look at grades, you will see student names down the side, their grades will go across this way and eventually a total will populate. But we'll have each of the individual grades listed and then the average of those uh, assignments in the American Pharmacists Association. And then my, I should rename this um, as um, certificates. Am I making sense? Um, let me also bounce to another course and show you one other sort of important thing that goes with assignments. Um, our course, Interprofessional Education. Um, this is sort of the navigation piece that goes with assignments and how to lose assignments. <laughs> um, and having lost assignments before, uh, that happens. Um, so when you make an assignment, actually, I'll click here. When you make an assignment, you can actually um, uh, assign it to a module. Uh, go back, sorry. I'm clicking the wrong button here. Nope. Where am I? Where am I doing this wrong? I'm drawing a blank at the moment how to get there, but let me go back to this. So when we are, we have these, I built these assignments for a course. And um, here's a good example of the publish or not to publish. Um, they had a reflection due. Uh, unfortunately, the reflection was due during the ice age of San Antonio 2021, and I've never turned it on. We rescheduled that date, so I'll be changing this information, but they've never seen the assignment yet. And I've had students go, I'm ready to do my final reflection, but we haven't finished the course yet. So this is my way of keeping them from seeing it. It's already built, and when I publish it, they'll be able to see it. In modules, um, if they click on the first link, link of the module, it walks them through it. At the, at the end of each of these is next, to move to the next piece in the module. And they can't go to module two until they've completed module one. They have to work their way through, and there's the assignment for module one at the end of the module. If I delete this from the module, it still exists. So this all being I have, the assignment. Pardon? This being the assignment. This being the assignment. If I delete anything from that, so the modules. Let me go back a page. When you're building these modules. They're combinations of things over here, of files and pages and quizzes and assignments. Yeah. So this is a page, all right? Basically think of it as a web page with some instructions and a couple of links to the outside world. They need to read this and go to these two articles to go through this. And after they've read, uh, actually, let me go back to the one before it. So they'll work their way through these modules and you can and you'll see this little symbol here that means this ted talk is opened outside of canvas so they don't lose this canvas page it opens outside of it and then they'll go to the next one if by if in my module i am stupid one day and i go to this collective confidence and I accidentally remove it. I haven't really removed it from Canvas. I've only removed it from the module. It still exists over here in pages. I'll just have to add it back in. The same thing happens with assignments. If I accidentally remove this assignment from the module, it still exists in my course. The students just can't get to it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and I have done that before, um, intending to remove one and my cursor was in the wrong spot and I 
removed the wrong thing. Like, and then, you know, panic ensues because they're trying to do the assignment before the due date and I've effectively hidden it from them. So, um, I'm trying to think, uh, let me also, I'm gonna bounce over to quizzes. I know you've already seen quizzes, but when you add quizzes, you will notice in quizzes that you get very much the same type of information down the page. Um, although they are a little different, quizzes are a type of assignment, but there's some very specifics to that. And my favorite of quizzes is practice quiz. Um, personally, what I do for our, um, we do this uh, basic drug knowledge and calculations quiz every week for our students. I will go in and make 40 or 50 quiz questions and they've got about a minute per question to do it. And then when I, and I put it in a, in a, in a quiz um, question bank. And then when it comes time for the graded quiz, I use the same question, but I only pull 10 questions out of it. So they've had a chance to see all of those. If you don't want to use the exact same questions, that's fine. You just make two question banks um, that are similar. Um, and there are lots of choices for you as well with assigning the quiz. But when you make a quiz, you'll see that it falls into the assignments again. And you do have to um, create a, in the um, in the assignments area, a different spot if you want quizzes to be listed differently than other assignments. This is one of those um, Canvas grows very um, organically, and if you think back to the example I gave earlier, when you make an when you make a new assignment, you can make a new group. In quizzes, that feature just didn't move over. Probably be very simple for Canvas to do that, but they just haven't done it yet. So if you wanted a separate group for quizzes, you would go to assignments and make a new group that said quiz. And then on your list of locations when you've made your quiz, Go back to edit. That choice would be there. Does that make sense? I know I've thrown a lot at you. Um, so, Susan, how is it that you know exactly what question to ask so far? And I didn't feed you anything up front. I don't know. I think dumb luck. I'm going to ask you one more question. Ask, we had a pr previous session on the calendar. Uh -huh. and some things that were said then are now making more sense to me now. Um, am I right uh, about the significance of having due dates on assignments and quizzes? Not Ab only for getting things done, but getting them on the calendar? Absolutely. If you put a due date with your assignment, it populates the course summary, which is on your syllabus page, and it populates in the calendar. And if I click of all of these, the reason, if I click go back to February, these due dates are showing on the calendar on the 10th and 19th, and indeed, those are the due dates there. I click on the 10th and it will show me these assignments. If I were, if they weren't showing on the page, it would take me to it. Yeah. And since I didn't weight them separately, there are no weights showed associated with it. Um, these are weighted by points. So I calculated the number of points each of them would had. And so it's just a total number of points. Right. And while we're on the calendar piece, uh, the second piece that's now making sense to me too, is uh, naming assignments. Since the calendar has things from all of their courses, you might be kind of mindful of that and make sure that like homework might not be so useful in that context. But absolutely, you know, a little, a little, um, you know, a little abbreviation in front of homework for the course name or something. 
Well, the other thing that does happen is the, um, I'm looking at this as an instructor now, if you were looking at this as a student, they get to choose which courses are showing in their, um, okay. their calendar and they're color coded. So, okay. and so it'll say, you know, APC2 for one of my courses mm -hmm. and if they, and it'll be green. And so in the calendar, there'll be green marks. Okay, so that helps. So, on it, so it helps sort by course. And mm -hmm. you can actually turn off the one, you know, if I don't want to see my other courses, I just want to see what's due in um, this okay. uh, interprofessional education course. That's the only one I highlight. It's very much like looking at your calendar in um, Outlook. You turn on the calendars you want to see and turn off the ones you don't. Yeah. But you're right. Um, careful naming is awful, often useful. Um, the other nice thing it does for both you and the student is a to-do list. And so um, I have a to-do list with uh, 77 uh, modules I need to grade from a month ago um, because that was their due date and then the ice storm hit and I have not gone back and graded them yet. Um, so they had three modules due that day and they have not been graded yet. So actually one of them has been graded I got started and then I lost power and have not gone back. Um, other thoughts or questions? Good morning, I have one um, and I don't know, it might, hi, it might be outside the scope of, of what you can present here and maybe for a future uh, presentation. But in the MHA program, we have program competencies and we, link our students, um, some of us do, our students' assignments in a course to those specific competencies. And at the end of the course, we figure out what, how well they've done on the competency and we track it across all of the 21 months they're in the program. When I went to the first initial briefing of Canvas, um, what really sold me on it is they said, you are able to create your assignments to link to those competencies so it can automatically pull that, which is like a major time saver for us. And this is an accreditation thing. Do you know how to do that? I have only played with it, uh -huh. but um, in the assignments, we've got the details of an assignment, but there's also mastery paths. Okay. And so as I understand it, you can uh, assign mastery paths to it and points. And you know, they have to um, um, pick certain, they have to have certain grades to have considered mastery of it. And there's a separate, you know, so, you know, if, if uh, that assignment is given uh, 100 points, they have to have 70 to master it. Um, or maybe you change that to 90. Um, and then there's a list of mastery things that you've done at the end. Excellent. But there's another piece to setting that up. And I have not done mastery. Um, uh, I've tried it and um, it was more than I had time to invest, you know, when I was starting to do it. So if you were to do that, does that impact their grade at all? Or it's just one of those extra nice features? As I understand it, it doesn't impact their grade. Okay. Unless you click, they have to have mastered it to pass a module. Got it. Is um, this something that um, Susan and Kathy and everyone that we could have um, a training session on? Because this is the, this is like the most amazing feature that it can do. And I'm I know at least in the health professions, many of us have to measure competency achievement, and that would be great. Sure, we'll put something on. Would summer be timely for you or do you need it to happen this semester? Um, early summer would be good because we'll okay, be setting we'll up for our fall. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be doing a Canvas Hour series in the summer, we'll add that to the, we'll add this to that. Thank mm -hmm. you, wow, this is really nice. Thanks, uh, Niall, this is really helpful. No problem. Um, I just put in the chat a link to a document that has um, a lot of the stuff that I just mentioned as text, as reminders and shortcuts. Mm -hmm. um, so that if you're interested in reading more about it um, or just a reminder, yes, it can do that. Um, hopefully that downloads. Um, I have to really uh, give props to Melissa for this. 
um, when we were talking about what belonged in this, because you know, doing the assignment page and doing the quiz page was, was really quite easy, uh, but it's all the other pieces that go into thinking about it that, um, and the implications of each of the things um, uh, are, are useful. I, I think as I look down that list, one of the things I didn't mention um, that is useful when someone submits an assignment, um, you can't delete an assignment a student has submitted. Um, that's probably a good thing so that if, um, you know, we've got that malicious instructor, you know, there's one in every 100,000 or whatever, who says, oh, you didn't submit it because I deleted it and hid it from you. You can't do that. <laughs> uh, now, let me tell you how to do that. Um, <laughs> the way to do that is you actually have to delete the entire assignment and it deletes it for everyone. So you cannot delete an individual assignment. Um, so, you know, Billy Ray Joe Bob uh, has an awful assignment, you know, and he's like, I want you to do it again. I'm just deleting the old one. You can't do that. You'll have to go in and um, under speed graders stuff, you can um, add another attempt. And when you add that other attempt, he can submit another one, but you can't re remove the first one. Um, and I've seen people try to do that and um, it makes sense. Somebody, somebody says, oh, I, I didn't mean to submit. I was just trying um, to, um, to test it out and I submitted and I lost my only opportunity. You know, okay, I can go in and add another assignment for you. You can't go in and delete the first one though. Okay, so let's go back to what you just said there about the speed grader. I know it's not the main event today. So let's say, you know, uh, Sweetie June wrote just a terrible, terrible paper for me. And even though, you know, the I've set it up so it's one submission, I, I'm going to say to her, no, you got to do this over again. So if I do uh, another attempt inside the speed grader, it overrides that just for her? Yep. Okay, great. Good to know. Um, and... Um, it's a little bit of a pain at times, but you know, here's a speed grader assignment that's up here. And I can download that essay. I can add comments. Um, I can edit on the document. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm trying to remember where that add an extra um, submission is. And I'm, I'm drawing a blank at the moment, but I know- Oh, don't worry about it. We're gonna have a whole session on speed grader. It was just, I was making sure I was following the bouncing ball in terms of the big picture. Right. Um, and actually the one in the, um, with quizzes, you know, again, another, let me grab a course that has quizzes. Um, with quizzes, um, in addition to speed grader, um, if I pick a particular quiz, I can, it's very easy there. I can moderate the quiz. I can watch what's going on in real time as they're giving the quiz in class. And then I know there's this little pencil here and I can give that person an extra attempt or extra time. I really like the extra time for people that have accommodations. Mm -hmm. Canvas doesn't uh, let you put in standard, uh, uh, let's say Billy Ray Joe Bob, I'm sorry, Redneck, I pick on my own group. Um, Billy Ray Joe Bob gets an accommodation of time and a half on a quiz. Canvas doesn't let you preset that. Uh, that's one downside to it, to their internal quiz uh, method. But when the quiz starts up, I can go to moderate the quiz and I can change Billy Ray Joe Bob's time from 12 minutes to, to 20 to give him that extra time. Other questions, other thoughts? Or do I give back 15 minutes of your time? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm pretty happy about that idea. Melissa, you gave me lots of great ideas for this. Do you have anything to add? You're very welcome. And I actually don't. This was amazing. Very thorough. <laughs> and I think it's on the surface. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, thank you all very much for coming. And I'll go ahead and end the meeting for all of us. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, and, thank you very much. All right. See you next time. Uh-huh.